So we're going to get this fire going. The way we're going to do that is by creating a paper ball. Coal forges, assuming that you're using bituminous coal, are really pretty easy to get going. There are a number of different techniques for creating these paper balls. Um, people do these bird nests and they'll sprinkle coal dust and stuff like that on the inside. Um, a lot of kind of fancy stuff. In my opinion, it's uh, pretty much make a, a ball of paper. The only way that you're really gonna go wrong with this is that if you really tighten this down a lot, you need there to be air spaces in there so that the oxygen can get to it and that it can burn good and hot. If you really um, tighten this paper ball up, then you're gonna get a lot more smoldering than you are a good hot flame. Uh, assuming that, that you've got that hot flame, you're, you're good to go. So, something about that size. Toss that back there. A lot of times, I will make a little bit of a tail on the end here, just so that I've got something to light. Get that fire going. Put it down in here. I'm going to give it a couple cranks to really make sure that this is going. And then I'm going to cover it up. If possible, I'm going to cover it up mostly with coke. Not always an option, but it'll reduce the amount of smoke that you get. Give it a bunch of air. Today. 
what I'd like to show everybody is the project that we make in our one hour class. So we're out here at Pioneer Farms in Austin, Texas, uh, Living History Museum. We're really dedicated to try and make sure that some of the essential crafting skills stay alive. Um, in our blacksmithing 1-0 class, it's a two-day course, Saturday and Sunday, or a four-weekend, a four-evening course during the week. And what we make is a lovely coal rake like this, and along with that coal rake, we make a couple different hooks. There's a J-hook, an S-hook, I'm sorry, a J-hook, a spike hook. It looks like a J hook and a spike hook, except it's an S shape instead of a J shape. So, the material we're going to be using in order to make all of these projects is 3 8 inch round mild steel. If you have a choice between hot rolled and cold rolled, the hot rolled steel is cheaper. Um, and it doesn't do any benefit for us uh, getting the cold rolled steel. This is 48 inches long. As part of this lesson, what we try and do, uh, we want to make sure that we focus on three essential blacksmithing skills. This class is really dedicated to learning how to cut steel using a hardy tool, learning how to draw steel out, putting a point, and drawing a good even square, and then how to bend steel. So rather than pre-cutting everything into the individual lengths, we're going to go in and we're going to figure out um, where to cut this stuff and do it as part of the class. So first thing I'm going to do is try and find the midpoint of the steel. So if you've got somebody else who can hold the steel steady for you, you can certainly do it with the center punch. We're going to come in and just make a mark using our hot cut. So I'm going to put it at the halfway spot on the hot cut, give it one hit with the brass hammer, give it one more hit. So I've got a little bit of a notch in there. I'm looking to have just enough that I can find that when I put it in the fire and pull it back out easily. So let's put that in and get it hot. We've got our mark. I'm going to come in even with the fire. Pay attention to where my mark is. Try and get that right there in the center. And we're going to start giving it some air. question as we start heating up the steel is how do I know when it's hot enough to pull it out? Um, an easy way to do that, especially when you're first beginning, is make sure that you can see through the coal down into the steel. So I've got a little spot there where I can see down into it. And what I want to look for is for the steel to disappear in the fire. So I want a fire that's kind of an orange color and the steel is going to look like a dark shadow in front of that. As the steel heats up and it starts glowing, it'll become the same temperature as the fire, give off the same color light. When I get into that bright red, orange color, uh, and the steel disappears from the fire, I know I'm ready to pull it out. There we go, so we're at the right color. So I'm gonna pull this out. You can see it's nice and glowing. It does get pretty bendable at this point. I'm gonna find my mark, put that on my center cut, or my hot cut. And for this one, I'm gonna do a real simple cut. I'm gonna cut till I'm about 80 to 90% of the way through the steel. So you can see I've got just a little bit left there. I'm gonna turn it on its side, and we're gonna cut the rest of the way through that. Well, not the rest of the way, another 80, 90%, so it's dangling. So why we wear aprons in the shop, because you never know when hot steel is going to fall on you. Since this other piece has been through the fire, I'm going to pick it up with tongs and we'll toss that into the quench tub. So we've got about 24 inches of 3 8 inch round here. We're going to turn that into our coal rake. The first thing that we're going to do as part of this is put this point on it and draw an end out, then put another point on it and draw the other end out. Let's put that into the fire. Let that start heating. I'm gonna grab a piece of chalk. I wanna to talk to you guys about how to put a point on something efficiently. This 
is an area where a lot of folks really struggle. Uh, putting a point on something, if you're doing it right, it's very easy. If you're doing it wrong, it's just a lot of work. So, if we imagine that this is our anvil right here, what we're gonna wanna do is come in and do some hammer blows half on, half off of the anvil. So this is our hammer. And by establishing this blow where the hammer is at an angle going halfway down the face of the anvil so the anvil edge is striking the middle of the hammer face, we get a point right there. That point is the point that we're gonna make on our steel. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna put our piece of steel at about a 30 degree angle so it is right on the edge of the anvil. Hammer blows are gonna come in here, half on, half off the anvil, and that's gonna make our point. So we're looking for a spot right there. It can be a little tricky sometimes to hold the steel in the right spot. Um, and I'll show you a couple things that we can do to try and make that as easy as possible. But first, let's get this off. All right, so we've got it good and hot. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna hold it as close as I can to the end that I'm gonna be working. That'll provide me some more stability. I'm also going to put one hand against my hip. That will provide even more stability. I'm gonna put that edge of the steel right on the edge of the anvil, give it a blow to straighten it out. Hold it up about 30 degrees. Couple hammer blows, rotate. Couple hammer blows, rotate. And what I'm doing with the rotation is I'm rotating my entire wrist. Your wrist rotates right about 90 degrees. So if you do that, you get a nice even square. If I was trying to rotate this with my fingers, it's tricky to make sure you're going a full 90 degrees back and forth with it every time. Rotating with your wrist gets you pretty close to 90 degrees every time right there. So we've got our points on it, uh, pretty easy to do if you're doing it right there. Where I see a lot of folks go wrong with this is they will try and create a point by hammering on it back here in the middle of the, the face of the anvil. And it is just a, a beast to try and get those hammer blows accurate enough that you're hitting right on the edge of the steel in order to get that point. What tends to hap happen is instead people just draw this end out. But we want a point, so edge of the far side of the anvil is the way to do that. Let's heat it back up and we'll start drawing this out. This forge is definitely a workout for you. It is an amazing privilege to work with equipment that's this old and it's been in use this long. Our anvil that we're using up here on the front is also right about the same age. That is an old wheelwright's anvil. So you'll notice as opposed to the standard London pattern anvil that a lot of folks have, the horn on this thing is absolutely enormous for its size. It also has a very thin, very long face on it. This is exactly the kind of anvil that you want if you're gonna be making the metal rims on wagon wheels. So that's what it would have been originally used for. Um, but again, just a privilege to be able to work on some of the old historic equipment. All right, so we are very good and hot there. Let's come over here and draw this out. I'm gonna go to the center of the face of the anvil here. I'm gonna give it a couple blows on each side, rotate back and forth. I just kinda wanna work my way back. You'll notice my hammer blows more or less staying in the same spot. I am moving my steel under the hammer rather than chasing the steel with my hammer. And what I'm looking for here is an even taper from my point all the way back to the parent stock. Right now I'm coming in, I'm just looking for any areas where I've got lumps or bumps. Smoothing those out. It's starting to look pretty good there.
this is going to probably wind up being the break into my handle so I don't want to draw this taper out too fine I want it to have a little bit of meat because it's going to be getting heated up as part of its day to day job um, and moving coal around and I want to make sure it's got the beefiness to do that so I am pretty happy with this what I'm looking for to kind of judge that if we come in here and look at it is I've got nice sharp square edges on here it is relatively flat you can see a few hammer marks but for the most part it's nice and smooth and it's also pretty even if we were to lay a straight edge on there it's you know not 100 percent but you're not going to have one angle like this and then another angle like this and then another angle like this right we want it from the tip back to the main body of the material to be one nice continuous line so give that a couple of hits just to straighten it out here happy with this side we're going to quench it and we'll work on the other side one tip when you're quenching if you pull it out and it's still steaming put it back in make sure it's good and cool also make sure that you go in pretty deep on a quench right it's easy to quench off the end down here still have a hot spot here in the middle you flip it around you grab from the other side and you wind up burning yourself so we're going to go in and get all of that nice and cool flip it around same thing on the other side we're going to do a little bit of fire maintenance here while we're warming this up i want to just start building up the coal around my piece a little bit here move this stuff out of the way and the goal with that is I want to have some coal that's warming up is off gassing is having those impurities uh, come on out of it so that it'll turn into coke and then as my fire burns down in the middle I'll be able to push this fresh coke after it's warmed up right the coal turns to coke into the middle and have a cleaner burning fire. Almost hot enough. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to come here again to the edge of the anvil, hold it up close, hand on the hip, a couple blows on each side, rotate back and forth with my wrist, and establish that initial point. This is going to be my handle, so I want to draw this out a bit longer and thinner than I did the other side. One thing I see folks do a lot when they're first starting is they like to work steel that's too cool. This is glowing a little bit. You can get a little more useful work out of it, out of it but I really want to draw out a long end. So rather than fight with that cooling steel, I'm just going to put it back in the fire, heat it up again. Once I start getting down to that dull red heat, I really want to start thinking about putting it back in the fire and warming it back up. All right, so we got a good color on that. Come to the center of the anvil again. I'm going to draw this out. Nice, long, thin paper this time. As I hammer near the tip, I'm going to lighten up those blows, a little heavier, a little thicker, or harder, when I'm back in the thicker pieces of the steel. To like, look like I'm starting to like the way that looks. We'll take one more heat on here. All right, that is definitely cool enough. We want it back in the fire. The part that I'm working on right now is this loop end, this handle end. So I want some steel that I'm able to make a little loop and then bring it into this larger loop. This is a circle, so this is going to be, the loop here is going to be about a third the length that I've got drawn out. 
So the more I draw out, the bigger that loop's gonna be. The tighter I draw it, the shorter it's gonna be. The smaller. All right, well that's looking pretty good as far as the heat goes. Let's work on drawing that out just a little bit more. loop for our handle here. Straighten that out a little bit. Since we've already got this side warm, what we'll, we'll do is go ahead and work on that handle in, and then we'll come back and work on this side. So, first thing I've got to do is put that little curl that we looked at in. So I'm going to heat up just the end of this. The steel's gotten a lot thinner than when I first started. I need to be careful that I don't overheat this and burn it. Very easy to do at this point. All right, so we've got this hot again. We're gonna work on that curly little tip. This is a delicate procedure. What we wanna do is take our piece of steel, just hold it over the edge of the anvil, tap down on it a little bit. What we're looking for is to start bending it over. We'll bring it here. We'll put that bend up, give it a couple taps back. You might go back and forth a little bit, knock it down a little bit, come back in here, roll it, give it a couple blows here to flatten it out. The real trick when you're making loops, you don't want to hit in the same spot too many times. If you hit in the same spot more than a couple times, you wind up with flat spots. Obviously circles don't have flat spots, so that can become a real challenge, but I think I like the way that little loop works. So now we're going to take a longer heat, heat up this whole section we've got drawn out, and we're going to make the other end of our handle. As we work on this piece, you're going to see folks coming in and out of frame, uh, getting some of the other fires started. It is Thursday night. This is our open shop night, so every night from 5 to 8.30, really whenever I want to start heading home and going to bed, we've got folks come out here, uh, normally half a dozen, dozen smiths or so, uh, working on their different projects. Well, I do love this forge. There is a reason that they moved over to hand crank and then electric blowers. This is a real workout keeping this thing going. So we've got it good and hot. We're actually gonna wind up needing to hit right on our little curl here. I don't wanna smash it. So I'm gonna take it down to the quench tub. I'm gonna cool off the end right there. Come here, put it on the horn. And I'm just gonna start tapping it around. As this gets too far for me to hit it, I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing going the other way until that closes up. Once that starts closing up, I'll bring it here. I'll give it a couple blows. In order to center that, so it's gonna hang evenly. I'm gonna go a little far there. There's a lot of choices in handle design. You can make this more circular. I kinda like this teardrop shape to it. One important consideration as you are doing this is are you going to be hanging this on a hook so that can slide right onto it or are you going to be hanging it on a bar? If you're hanging it on a bar, you need to make sure it opens up enough that it'll fit onto whatever bar you're hanging it on. I like to leave them a little bit open. So I'm going to put this over the horn. I'm going to give it a couple taps down the length of the horn hitting this way and that'll open it up. So now if I've got a bar that I'm hanging this on, it'll go right in there. Just flatten that out, try and keep it all nice and centered. And we're done with this side, so we'll take it, 
end of the quince tub. I get a lot of questions from kids when they come by about what is in our quince tub. Is it water? Is it something else? Anything special in there? I always tell them it's water in there and then dead bugs. And I ask them if they know why we put the dead bugs in it. Uh, and they've got a variety of different answers, but I tell them it's because it improves the flavor of the water. And they normally appreciate that. I've yet to have any of them take me up and having a cup of it, but I'm hopeful that one day someone will. So as I heat this up, where I'm really trying to get my heat is down here in the area where it transitions from where I've drawn out and it's square to the round parent stock. We're gonna be bending that section, and so we need it hot. If you've got a nice big uh, forge like this one, you might be able to put the point all the way through the fire so that that small tip is not heating up and isn't gonna burn on you. All right, we've got a reasonable heat there. I'm gonna come in, put the edge where that transition occurs, right on the edge of the anvil. I'm just gonna tap this down. That'll tend to bring the back end up. So I'll give it a couple hits. That pops this up. You just kinda go back and forth a little bit until you get a reasonable square. If you've got a bit of a twist in there, you can just hammer along the length in order to get that out. You'll notice I've got a pretty round bend in there. This is not a real square corner. Uh, that is typical in blacksmithing. If you really want a square corner in there, you need more material than you start with in the rest of this, the body of the material. So you've got to do an upset and put more material into it. Not necessary in this application, so I'm just going to go with a nice round bend. If I wanted to, I could come here and I could do a couple blows like this with the peen of the hammer to try and push it back in there, square it up a little bit more, or come around like this and work on squaring that up. But I like the nice round shape to it. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I'm gonna just leave it at that. Uh, you will notice that this and this are not aligned. Not a problem, not something we need to worry about at all. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna put a twist in it, and we'll line those up as we do the twist. So let's work on getting that hot. All right, so we've got a good heat on this. I'm gonna come in for the twist and I'm gonna flatten a section of it out. There's a lot of different types of twists that we could do here. I'm a big fan of kind of the classic flat twist. So that's what I'm gonna put in. You can see all I'm doing is flattening it on two sides, taking it down to maybe half its original thickness. And this is going to produce a nice twist. A couple things to keep in mind as we're going in and doing the twist is one, where it's hottest, it's going to twist the most. So we don't want to take a longer section of the twist then we can get hot at one kind of go. That way we can make sure it's all evenly heated we'll get a nice even twist. The second thing is that you can only see twist where you've got edges. So if you twist round bar, it looks like round bar, it doesn't do anything. Coming in and flattening this, putting a square on it, uh, even putting some lines in it, something so that you can see the twist is important uh, if you want that twist to be visual. So we've got it flattened. I'm gonna come in, heat up that same section again, then we're gonna take it over to the vise and twist it. All right, we've got a good heat on this. Let's go twist it. So I'm gonna drop it into this vise right here. Try and get that lined up nicely. A handy tip, if you got a handle or something like that on here, you can drop a pair of tongs through this. Get a lot of leverage on it. Just gonna twist it. The only real goal here is that I need to make sure when I'm finished twisting it that everything is straight. So I'm going to twist it until it looks 
pretty nice and I think I'm pretty happy with that. Grab a brush, just brush it off. Nice tight twist. If I go in to hammer this with a metal hammer on a metal anvil at this point, I'm gonna bend my, or I'm gonna mess up my twist. So I'm gonna bring it back here. So we'll come in, give that a couple blows, straighten it all up. I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Let's bring it back over to uh, the quench tub. Drop it in. Make sure it's all nice and cool here. No steam coming off of it when I pull it out. Make sure it looks like it hangs straight, which it does. So I think we can be pretty happy with how this looks. If you've got a coal forge, this is a great first project to make. You can make it without any tongs or anything more than your hammer and your anvil. And it is an essential tool while you're working in the fire. Uh, it can also be a pretty effective way to deaden the noise on your anvil. So you'll notice hanging out of the Pritchel hole and a lot of these anvils, we've got coal rakes. If I pull this out, give this guy a, a hammer. Hopefully that comes up on the video. I can still hear that thing ringing. Uh, it is real unpleasant, not great for your ears. Um, drop the coal rake in there and it ends that vibration much faster. So, great tool there. So, we've got our coal rake finished up. Very happy with how this looks. Uh, again, essential tool for the fire. Um, absolutely something you wanna make if you're gonna be working with coal forges or charcoal forges. Uh, next time, what we're gonna look at is this spike hook or colonial hook. This is the same project, just smaller. That's one of the nice things about really focusing on these fundamental skills. Once you know how to draw something out, you know how to cut it, you know how to bend it. Those three skills alone open up a ton of stuff that you can do in blacksmithing and they're fundamental skills. There is not a project you're gonna work on that doesn't have cutting, drawing out, and bending. And it's important to find a way to practice those skills, really hone them and get good at them. Making these little hooks is a great way to do it. Making nails, we'll look at that in a video, is another great way to do it. Um, a lot of uh, small projects, and I really like small projects like this, where you can focus on one or two skills and lock them in, rather than spending an hour or two on a wide variety of skills, never really getting the practice to nail each one of those skills down. So, thank you guys for joining me, and we'll have you back out here at the farm again soon. Pumping one hand for the hammering. This is how you Keep stay anatomically like mm -hmm. you don't get like one big arm. It's good for you. I'm telling you, like a year of this, and you're going to be huge. Yeah, when huge. we used to have this forge up and running all the time, man, I could crank away on this thing all day. But my pumping game is not where it should. Ah, we here at Kind Air Farms are here to pump. You are. Ha, 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 ha.